Hi, this is Warren Buckleitner, and today I'm looking at the Kibo 21 robot kit. Kibo was developed by a team at Tufts University, led by my friend Marina Beers. It's been in development for a long time, so I was really eager to get my hands on it. Now the kit you're looking at here is called the Kibo 21 robot kit. It costs $500 and comes in this plastic tub. The cool thing about Kibo is that it uses a red light scanner that reads barcodes off of wooden blocks. Now while this looks really cool, and it actually is, everybody who saw it was like, whoa, that's neat, it is really complicated. It's a classic example of something being so easy to use that you can't figure it out. The reason is that there are so many different lights flashing and sounds that you really don't know when the program has been successfully read by the base unit. This caused quite a bit of struggle when we tried it out with our testers. One thing we think would help would be a reset button or an erase key that lets you know instantly that the robot is empty. We tested the kit with children of different ages and they instantly liked the thrower. Now these are children at the upper age range of the ages four to seven, and so it's hard to imagine children in preschool or kindergarten actually being able to use a lot of these things without quite a bit of help. Now there's a lot that you're not seeing in this video. There is a rotating stage that you can use to sort of make art, interactive art projects. And so with a, a bit of time and help and certainly adult supervision, you could make some pretty cool things with this Kibo kit. So for example, for a Halloween project, you could make a scarecrow that reacts to sound or light and lurches forward or spins. Kibo is powered by four AA batteries that are non-rechargeable. And we like the fact that you can use uh, standard Crayola-sized markers. It's worth noting here that we've seen all of these functions in other robots for much less cost. Uh, we would recommend looking at Wonder Workshops, Dash and Dot, for example. Whoa! One indication of the issues that we had with Kibo can be told by the instructions. There's a lot of instructions and the whole back page is full of things that can go wrong. So teachers should know that uh, in particular with the difficulty in scanning and getting commands in and knowing that the robot has understood what you've done, um, you're going to need a lot of hand holding to have a successful experience in a classroom, at least with this version. The bottom line, for $500, the Kibo 21 robot kit has too much complexity and there are other options that you should probably consider. That said, the team behind Kibo is continually learning and evolving, and so we'll hope to see perhaps a Kibo 2.0 that might be easier to use. I'm Warren Buckleitner. We'll see you next time.